As adults, we will talk among ourselves about last night's verdict in the George Zimmerman trial. But as we look forward, we're also going to have to grapple with what we're going to say to our children. Because what we must not forget is that Trayvon Martin was not an adult. He was the child of Sabrina Fulton and Tracy Martin. He had just celebrated his 17th birthday. I will never forget the relief I felt. I'm a sexual assault survivor, and yet the relief I felt at my 20-week ultrasound when they told me it was a girl. Mm. And last night I thought, I live in a country that makes me wish my sons away, wish that they don't exist because it's not safe. Yeah, and I mean, uh, you know, when I had a girl, I actually was hoping initially for a boy because I was afraid for a girl in this world. I'm thinking a black girl in this world, I would rather have a boy. But now I find that as my kids are teenagers, I am more afraid for the boys than I am for my daughter. Um, because everywhere they go, everything that they're wearing, their demeanor, the way they walk, are they looking at you funny? Everything about them is supposed to be suspicious. And they're tiny, skinny, little kids that to me are babies. They're yeah. all babies. All three of my kids I think of as babies, but the world doesn't see them that way. As soon as they're out of my custody and out of their dad and my care, they are basically walking suspects, just waiting to either be arrested by the police, mm -hmm. followed around a store, made to feel uncomfortable in a store, like they're not shopping, they're stealing, you know, questioned about where they are, why are they there. So you, you always have to sort of teach them these horrible lessons in 2013 that you need to be really careful about who's around you. And you know what? We, my, their, their dad has always had this conversation with them about black taxes. You can't do what white kids mm. can do. You can't get away with it. So be careful. And about demeanor around police, never have we thought we had to have this conversation about demeanor around civilians. Around civilians. And that's what's really scary. You know, I'm, I'm a new father. My, brand new baby. Brand new. Four months old. And... and um, you know, my, my child has had the privilege to be held and, and, and by his auntie, Sabrina Fulton. Um, mm -hmm. And I told him this morning that um, you have an auntie who's an angel and who is on this earth as an angel. And I, I, I would love to at this uh, give a, a, a heartfelt thank you to Sabrina and to Tracy uh, for allowing all of us to follow in your footsteps, in your courage and your commitment to justice. You're remarkable human beings. So I'm a brand new parent as well of a girl. Um, and this morning I was talking to her dad about the case and about the future that we're leaving to her. And he said something to me that's really profound. And he probably would not want me to talk about this because he's an introvert. But um, he said, you know, I was talking about her unsafety, her, the world that she lives in, the world she's going to grow up in. And he says, well, I don't feel safe, right? So. For me, what does it mean to raise black children in a country where their parents don't feel safe? We can't even instruct them properly about how to behave, how to live, how to succeed when we're under siege and we're under surveillance constantly. And so I guess that's the other thing I want to say. It's that this is the moment that black people are the most free in the United States, right, given our long, long history of subjugation. And if this is what it looks like, then I don't really know what else to say. I don't really know what else to teach them. And this is also the 50th anniversary of the uh, bombing in Birmingham, yep. right? So March of Washington. But these other, these four little girls who died under similar situations, under similar duress, I just want to recognize them as well um, in this conversation. Um, you know, my daughter is grown. She's 21. Well, she's not grown to me. Um, <laughs> but she's 21 years old. And, you know, we go out places now. And I, I think back to one of the earliest, you know, things that we did that was explicitly political was me taking her to the rallies around Amadou Diallo yeah. uh, and explaining to her how this works and how we could wind up with a situation like this. And we were living in the Bronx, maybe less than a mile from where all this took place. And now, um, as she's 21, I kind of talk to her about how a young man should treat her. And I, and I tell her, like, if you go out with someone, it's his responsibility to make sure that, you know, you get home safely. And now I'm actually recognizing that she worries not only about the young man who's responsible for getting her home safely, she worries about her father. She worries about me as I'm, as I'm out in the, the public as well. And so what I talk to her about is that, you know, if I, your father knows what he's doing, he'll be okay. And it's, and it's just another kind of parental reassurance that no one should ever have to make. But that's the reality that we have here. It's interesting. Both of you have, have I think, laid the finger on, I mean, as we think about Trayvon Martin, it's the, the danger of... Of the love we have for our, our sons and our nephews, but there's, it's more than that. It's when you love black men, even adult black men, that, that sense of vulnerability and whether you love them in an intimate and romantic way or as your brother or as your friends and your business, like, and, and 
I will also say this, as much as race has been a key part of this, I do not want to miss that in Sanford, Florida, last night, the people who were rallying, those were interracial groups of people. Mm-hmm. And, and if, there's, if there's anything else we can say, it is that for all the danger, there is still, so let me show you, I appreciate this, there is still this possibility, there is still this possibility of building coalitions that are broad. Thank you to Salamisha, to Jelani, to Joanne, and to Michael. Up next, a century-old question from one of the most important philosophers in African-American life. It's a question we're still asking today.